Welcome back now. Time for top stories. Workers' Day may have come and gone without a new minimum wage announcement. Still, the federal government says implementation of whatever is eventually agreed on from May the 1st this year will come through. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who represented President Bola Tinubu at the May Day celebration held at the Eagle Square Abuja, says the federal government is open and willing to implement the recommendations of the tripartite committee working on the minimum wage. The organized labor in Nigeria has been agitating for better welfare, among other needs, in the face of daunting economic challenges. And this occasion provides an opportunity for the leaders to reiterate their demands. The Nigerian Labour Congress and TUC have made it clearly and emphatically that should the minimum wage negotiation continue and linger till the end of May, we can no longer guarantee industrial harmony in this country. The NLC and TUC hereby advise NEC and power sector operators to revise the last increase in electricity tariff within the next one week. Despite the short delay, the minimum wage will take effect on the first, from first May 2024. We are not going to lose any time. I do not take for granted the understanding, patience, commitment, and support you have shown throughout the implementation of this government's policies and programs. The success of our government's policies and programs hinges on the willingness of workers at the backbone of our workforce to embrace them wholeheartedly. I appeal to you to continue using the power of the labor movement for the greater good of our nation. Now, not all rallies yesterday held were for workers. A group of youths from Kogi State under the aegis of Kogi Independent Youths Association embarked on a procession in support of former Governor Yahya Billa to decry what they call the violation of the constitutionally guaranteed rights of the former governor's children who have nothing to do with the EFCC's investigation. The group, while declaring their support for the fight against corruption, appealed to law enforcement agencies to execute their mandate within the ambits of the nation's laws. We, members of the Kogi Independent Youth Association, hereby wish to decry the manner in which the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is handling the alleged corruption case against the former governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Alhaji Ayabelu and the systematic manner they are violating the constitutional guaranteed rights of his children who have nothing whatsoever to do with whatever the commission is investigating their parents for. Let it be on record that we do not support corruption in any manner. What we are against is for due process to be followed. Of course, when you begin to drag innocent children into the fray, it is highly unacceptable. This can damage them psychologically, for life, children don't play politics. Children can be punished for the sins of their parents. And the even sins of their parents and even such has been proven. Nobody deserves to be punished for a crime they know nothing about. In the meantime, Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Mr. Ola Ulukoyedi, has commended staff of the commission for their doggedness, diligence and sacrifices in breaking the fangs of economic and financial crimes and other acts of corruption. In a Workers' Day statement signed by EFCC spokesperson, Mr. Adelio Iwali, he asked them to be more fearless and continue to uphold the core values of the commission, which he says are courage, integrity, professionalism, and collaboration. And well, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, says it has traced a total of 219.84 billion Naira projects that were poorly executed across 176 ministries, departments, and agencies, MDAs. Chairman of the Commission, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Dr. Musa Adamu Aliu, while giving a breakdown, said the value of the projects on which contractors return to site is 30 billion naira, while recoveries made so far and assets stand at 676 million naira.
The federal government has commenced the payment of compensation to property owners affected by the ongoing demolition of facilities on the right of way of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road project from kilometer zero to three. The Minister of Works, Mr. Dave Umahi, who announced this at a stakeholders meeting, says about 2.75 billion naira has been put aside to flag off the payment of compensation to some of those affected. The minister also took a swipe on Mr. Peter B for his utterance about the coastal road project and what he described as a deliberate attempt at misleading the people. Away from that now, Lagos-based church, the Covenant Nation, has held the 35th edition of its non-profit initiative, the Platform Nigeria. The annual gathering, which holds twice in a year, is designed to drive growth in the areas of personal capacity, productivity, and national development. With speakers drawn from diverse fields around the world, this edition, which held in three different locations in Lagos, is aimed at shaping the minds of people and promoting local talent while pushing for the growth of Nigerian entrepreneurs. And now to security matters. Troops from the Nigerian Army uh, 93 Battalion, subsector 3B of Operation Wellstroke, stationed at Fiku, recovered an AK-47 magazine with 10 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition during a raid on a terrorist government area of Taraba State and this operation was prompted by reports from residents of the village. In a related development, troops deployed to Kofai Amadu and Kasuwang Husky in collaboration with troops from subsector 1AOPWS acting on intelligence regarding terrorist hideout in Vinga village, Kasina Ala local government area of Benue state, arrested a suspected kidnapper, Dogo Manu. And away from security matters, the frequent changes in the customs duty exchange rate have become a huge burden on the business community. And that's according to the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises, CPPE. In a statement, the CPPE stresses that the volatility is disrupting production processes and long-term planning efforts, which undermine the country's economic stability. And to address this issue, the enterprise is calling on the Central Bank of Nigeria to adopt a framework aimed at minimizing customs duty exchange rate volatility by implementing a quarterly rate starting at 1,000 naira to a dollar in collaboration with fiscal authorities. And a sad one comes from the foreign scene today. UK police named a 14-year-old boy killed in a sword attack in London this week as Daniel Ahanjori, as officers released more details about how the violent rampage unfolded. Ahanjori, a British Nigerian pupil, attended Bancroft Private School in Woodford Green, was mortally wounded as he left his home to go to school on Tuesday when he was attacked by a man wielding what appeared to be a samurai-type sword. Police tazred and arrested tasled rather and arrested the suspect a 36 year old man who remains in custody on suspicion of murder and Joris death is the second recent tragedy to hit bancroft's after a former pupil grace o Meili kumar was killed in nottingham last year as she tried to save her friend from a knife attack Sports news now. Nicolas Fulker gave Borussia Dortmund a 1-0 home win over Paris Saint-Germain in their Champions League semi-final first leg on Wednesday. Seeking a return to the final for the first time since 2013, the 1997 winners were dogged and deter dogged and determined out muscling their heavily favoured opponents. Fulker playing in his first Champions League season at the age of 31, collected a lofted pass from centre-back Nico Schosberg in the 36th minute and blazed a low shot into the left corner of the net. PSG, led by Kylian Mbappe, hit the post twice in quick succession early in the second half but could not break through.